We do it all again next Saturday, yeah. 10 o'clock through to 1. I'm looking forward to that already. Tesco's this week, Tuesday night and Thursday night. The band will be playing between 7 and 8.30, but we're collecting throughout the day. If you're able to help, um, there is a list out in the foyer. Um, you could sign up, that would be great. The Christmas posting box, which is down there in front of the two brownies on the front row, um, is open again this week. Um, it will be there for you to post the Christmas cards for people that regularly come to worship. That means they come in this building on a Sunday. We have an example. I've no idea who Margaret is, because we've got more than one Margaret. So if you stick things on your envelopes and you put a Merry Christmas sticker on the back, which Margaret was it for? Otherwise we're going to give it to Margaret Branson. Okay. <laughs> if you don't want to post Christmas cards, you can send via Sheila at the back there message and we'll put it up on the screen. Um, if you want to do that, that's good. You can send a message in a bottle or you can put it on the screen. Um, we're going to try something different. If you've got Christmas cards that have been posted, Ruth has kindly sorted them for us. Speak to Ruth and just say, have you got some Christmas cards for me? And if she has, she'll give them to you. If she hasn't, remember Jesus loves you. Okay. <laughs> There's a leaflet around that also tells you when we are out community carol playing. So we'll be out in a number of streets around Shirley. Um, Brownie Rainbow family friends, if you want to know when is the band going to be near or in even in your street, take one of these um, and we'll tell you on there. The only reason we won't come is if it's really heavily raining. The music's not good. We're okay, but the music's not good uh, if it rains like that. There are some flyers that tell you when our carol service is. 
um, and other things going around Christmas Eve, for example, outside the hall. Um, there's a list of when the band is out and about doing lots of other things as well. And I'll check my list, but I think we're almost there. Because we can actually come to worship, I think, I'm not sure. <coughs> so after this meeting, the band will commence um, its carol playing, and we're going to Speedwell Court, of course where um, Malcolm Monteith is, we're looking forward to that. Um, and probably a rendition of Oh Holy Night, if we can manage that, because Malcolm likes to stand and sing that with us. Uh, so looking forward to that. And then we're going down to the Hawthorns, again where we've got friends um, that are down. Um, finally, you, you'd be very aware that there was a very serious incident in Tesco's car park this week. Um, um, people involved and seriously injured um, are friends. They come to the cafe. Many of you, if you don't know them, will have seen them. Um, so just remember Stephen Mack in your prayers, if you will. It's a very, very difficult ongoing situation and potentially um, you know, more, more difficulty to come. So just remember those people and others um, in your prayers. We're delighted to welcome Major Denise Cooper to lead our worship today. So another round of applause as we greet the Major. It's hard to tell, isn't it? Who's behind the mask? It's a whole new game that we play at this time in our lives. But it's good to be with you. Uh, those of you that don't know, I recently arrived in the division. I came from Kingletham Corps in South Wales. Uh, so it's lovely to be back in front of a congregation, and particularly in front of the Brownies and Rainbows. We had Brownies and Rainbows, and I miss them. They were the best group and looked after me the most. So uh, I'm really pleased to be here today with you. And uh, most of you, many of you, come here every week. Um, but uh, what a privilege it is for us to be able to gather in worship, particularly in these days where many people are still not able to. So as we come together this second Sunday of Advent, we're going to be thinking about the gift of giving. The gift of giving. Some of you will be really organised about Christmas. Some of us are still thinking about it. I thought about getting the Christmas decorations out of the loft, then I sat down and had a cup of tea. <laughs> so um, we're, but we're, the, the next couple of weeks will fly by quickly, um, and uh, as we think about the, the purchasing of gifts to share, not just the gift of giving, but the gift of receiving as well. Um, so I've chosen a song for us to share together, and um, you'll see the words come up. Words that we can share together to give thanks to God for all that he gives to us. Um, we're going to sing the four verses straight away, if that's okay. But I want to point out to you verse 3. <coughs> verse 3 says, Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. I think this time of the year, those are two important things for us, aren't they? Giving and forgiving. Busy days, mistakes get made, and the forgiveness that we can show each other. So I invite you to stand. I will see the four verses straight through to get Thank you very much.
to us. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet, what can I give him? Give my heart. And as we, I'm going to invite the Browns um, representatives to come and light our two Advent candles uh, this morning. As we do that, and as we sing these words together, then just know that whatever our circumstances, whoever we are, we have something to give. And uh, as we sing this, may God show to us what he wants us to give or to forgive this Christmas time. The last verse. <coughs> that will be ours as the Salvation Army but also as individuals. That opportunity to make a difference at school, in our workplace, in our home. The time when perhaps we feel a little stressed and under pressure. Father, give us grace, give us love, give us patience beyond our own means. That this time we will not just think of ourselves but we can think of others and reach out to others. Father, those small gifts of kindness, whether it's in a practical way um, or in a gift, Father, they can mean more than words can tell. So, Father, we just ask that as we share together today, that your word, your encouragement will reach our hearts. That actually with all those uh, lists of jobs to be done, things to buy, places to be, that we will each morning wake and just give you thanks for your love and the gift that you gave to us. So Father, just be with us now. Speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's great to have um, our musical sections. Um, they're not to be taken for granted. As I go to many different places, um, not everyone is blessed with a band and a songsters and a pianist, and uh, you have all three. And uh, some of you, well, to be honest, sometimes we wish we didn't, I guess. That's a at Christmas. Some of you will wish, I wish I didn't have that whole list of things to do. But we are grateful, and uh, we look forward to the message from the band just now. Thank you.
You know, you want to clap, don't you? But you know it's not appropriate. But we do, um, and we are grateful for that message. Thank you. And we will continue to pray for you as you go out into your community and have opportunity. And I know for some of you who are rushing straight from work to some of those things, know that that's not taken for granted. As we uh, think about gifts of giving, I, I, if I gave you all opportunity this morning to say a thank you to someone, I'm sure some of you would be surprised that perhaps what you thought was just a very small thing meant a lot to somebody else. And, and I guess, because I get to lead, I get to be able to do that. And um, I want to say thank you to Rian. I arrived in the division about nine, <coughs> ten weeks ago, I don't know. It probably seems like forever for you, Rian, but I mean, it seems very recent for me. And um, my move was made very easy because of the small gifts of kindness and that both Rian and I know her family, uh, I believe somebody else might have mowed my lawn. Feel free to come and do that any time in the spring. Um, I don't mind. But thank you. And it's a representation of the opportunity we get to do some very ordinary, everyday things that make a difference. We're going to sing again. It's number 111 in the songbook. Not that you've got songbook, but I thought I'd tell you anyway. <coughs> Um, another carol, it came upon a midnight clear, that <coughs> glorious song <coughs> of old. Um, and we're going to stop after the first verse. Let's just sing the first verse and then we'll go from there. Thank you.
Now, it's a time of giving, and I don't know if you prefer to give or to receive, or do you like a bit of both? I have, I'm one of four girls, um, I have an older sister who loves to give presents. We've got to an age, as you can see, that actually being together as a family is more important about the gifts that we share. But um, she insists that we all go out shopping and buy each other gifts still. We've tried to give it up. Uh, but uh, she loves to give, and her generosity to us each um, is hard to, to match. But she loves that giving as much as receiving. And it's quite hard to buy the right present. I don't know whether you find that. Now, I don't know whether the brownies and rainbows and any of the other young people here, whether you go out shopping for gifts or whether your mum or dad or grandma does that all for you. It's a rhetorical question, you don't have to answer. I don't know if you like trying to buy something, whether you save your pocket money. I don't know if you get pocket money nowadays, it probably goes straight into a bank account and you have a card or something, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I remember my pocket money and we used to try and work out what we could buy our mum and dad each year. Well, I brought a, a, just a small gift for some of you um, today. And sadly, you have to be one of the young people, I apologise. Now, I haven't got enough for everyone, except I might have enough for everyone. So you'll need to work that out. What I've got are five different bags of sweets. And in the name of COVID, <laughs> in the name of COVID, they're all individually wrapped. And um, I'm going to come down and I'm going to choose five young people. Sorry. Five young people to give a bag of sweets to. Now, you have a choice then, and I'm not going to ask you what your choice is, and we're not going to even do it as part of the meeting. But you have a bag that has lots of sweets in, and you can make a choice. You can put that bag safely under your chair, and take it home with you, and enjoy eating them and having your teeth rocked. Make sure you do your teeth after you eat them. Um, or you can take them home and share them. Or you might want to share them around with your friends before you leave today. Okay? So nobody's going to check up on you. Well, no, we're not going to check up on you. Because we get given lots of things in life, don't we? Whether it's a gift whether it's a talent, whether it's just a friendship. And we always get a choice of whether we want to keep it to ourselves or to share it. Now, as I'm looking around, there are some people that are even older than me around here. Um, I know that's hard to believe with my grey hair descending upon me. But I would suggest that most of us have experienced the joy of giving as well as receiving. And um, I, I do have to make a confession, just in case some of you want to keep the bag of sweets to yourself. That's actually okay, I think. Because I was out once, and I had a bag of, um, a packet of fruit pastels in my pocket. And I really, really wanted one, but as I looked around, there were way too many people there, and if I'd shared them, I wouldn't have had any left. So I kept them in my pocket and ate them later. I just thought I had to confess that. Because actually there are some times that we're not very good at sharing. And, that's, and it might be a time when we, it's the right to keep it to ourselves. So, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but the theme is the gift of giving. <laughs> okay, so just talk amongst yourselves for a moment. I'm just going to give these out to five random young people. Do like all a bit of a blur, if I'm honest. I must go to the opticians. Talk amongst yourselves. Make sure you're not just talk to yourself. <laughs>
who looks the most... Not you, sorry. <laughs> carefully about the sharing of them. But brownies and rainbows and other young people and us older people, let's not forget what the rest of giving is and actually sharing that. And not just the physical things, but actually the things that make a difference, the love that we share. Great to have the brownies and rainbows and they're going to come and share their message with us, which I've seen and is an amazing message. Thank you. Um, I've got a request. Hopefully, I can share something that Grandma's been doing. Could we use your um, box? Because we've got some very small brownies, so you won't be able to see them if they're here. Oh, good answer. I'll bring them home and 
take them to the moon next week.
That one was way too energetic last time. Yeah. having all that you need, 
you will abound in every good work. <coughs> As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will then be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. The service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourself, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. We're going to just look at those verses briefly in a moment, but before that, I'm grateful for the ministry of the songsters, and they're going to share to us joy to the world.
from those verses that we have read. Um, today sees us uh, just the first Sunday in December, but it is the second Sunday in Advent already. And I wonder if you are really organised. I am um, a friend of mine posted on Facebook about three weeks ago. She's done all her Christmas shopping. I texted her to see if she was feeling unwell. Um, uh, but she's all organised, or whether you're like me, and you kind of got to December, so now you realise you need to think about getting some presents, and probably about a couple of weeks' time, I'll work that out. Um, you might have your presents brought, your cards written, the menus written for over the Christmas time, and all the arrangements in place. Our family, we make arrangements, and they're all in place by the end of November, then they change about eight times during December. I don't know if your family are like that too. But whether, um, whichever way it is, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we must not get lost in all the paraphernalia that comes uh, in a commercialised Christmas and that surrounds us throughout this season. Last year, many of us were not able to be with our family and friends at Christmas time or attend carol services. <coughs> It's almost we've forgotten what that was like to be trying to get online to different things and not being able to meet in person. But it reminded us again of what was really important when everybody <coughs> in the world was saying their Christmas was cancelled. As Christians, our Christmas was the same because we were able to thank God for the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. I want to thank, thank you to the Browns of Rainbows again for reminding us of the gift of giving, the many different um, things that they gave and they passed on, for showing us that there's joy in giving and in receiving. And if you think about the different things they brought to the Salvation Army, perhaps the, the, the officers will now realise where everything comes from, people wanting to help and then being able to pass it on. We live in a world where it seems that some people have too much and some people have too little. And those of us that perhaps think we have just enough, in reality, have plenty. This time of the year, in particular, we perhaps take time to think about other people's needs and make the effort to share something of what we have. I wonder what our world would look like if we did that all the time, not just at Christmas. This morning I want us just to consider three of the words found in those early verses um, that I shared with you uh, this morning. And perhaps as we think about those words, that we can consider how we give, not just of our uh, things materially, but perhaps of our gifts and our talents and our time. So the three words, and there won't be a test afterwards for you, but there are three words in there. Firstly, generously. Secondly, decided. And thirdly, cheerful. Not really very exciting words, but very important words. Let me read you again verse 6 that speaks about generously. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. It makes perfect sense. If you're a gardener or if you have an allotment, I'm neither. I don't have an allotment and I'm certainly no gardener. Uh, but if you sow lots of seeds, and you spoke about giving the, the, the plant in the bulbs, didn't you? If you put lots of bulbs in, whatever time of year you're meant to do that, um, I don't know, you'll see at the right time lots of flowers. It makes sense, doesn't it? You can't put one or two in and expect 40, 50 uh, lots of flowers. It makes sense that the more you give, and some of them, some of you gardeners will know that certain parts of the garden, you know you put something in there, but it hasn't grown, has it? You kind of keep looking, hoping, uh, but sometimes it doesn't always. And God encourages us to give generously. Sometimes it will be really appreciated. Perhaps other times it won't be. But if we believe that what we have from God, everything we have comes from Him, then it's not ours to hold on to. We're custodians of all that we have 
and so we can share. How many times have we heard the stories of these very rich people who have numerous homes, numerous cars and belongings, and yet I'm not always sure that they're happier or more contented. They might live in more comfortable circumstances, but that's not what will make them happy. Life on this earth is temporary, and whatever God chooses to bless us with, we have to be willing to give and to share. My experience is you can't outgive God. The more you give away, whether it's your time, your talents, your resources, then the more God blesses you. I encourage you this Christmas season and into 2022, give it a go and see if it works. So we know that we need to give generously. The second word is decided. Verse 7 it says, each man or woman, person, should give what he has decided to give in his own heart. You have to make a decision. I can't tell you what you should be giving. Christmas time sees lots of people making conscious decisions to reach out and help others, particularly those in need. And as we already said, what a difference that would make if we did that all the year round. For those of us in the Salvation Army, we know of different times of the year and on a weekly basis we get opportunity to give, to give generously and we alone decide what we give. If we choose not to give generously, if we make a conscious decision, then don't expect the blessings to come back necessarily. We need to decide what is right for us what God is saying to us of what we give. Most of us, in reality, live according to what we have. And I guess if you get a bit extra money, we always find something to spend it on. But I wonder if this Christmas time is a time for us to seriously consider what we have, not just materially, but what we can give. You know the difference it makes when somebody does something for you, when somebody takes time to spend with you, takes time to do something for you. Maybe it's a conversation to be had as an individual with yourself or with a friend, or as a family, to make a decision of what you can give that will bless others. And finally, in verse seven, and uh, I know many of us over many years have smiled, and I'm sure you've had it quoted at you this verse, that God loves a cheerful giver. It goes on to say from that verse, each one should decide what to give, not reluctantly, not under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. I don't know if you've ever tried to make a child apologise for something they've done and they don't see any reason why they should. And uh, the tone of the voice says everything. You may have done it yourself. Um, when, you're, when you're not really sorry, or you don't see why it's your fault and you should apologise, you know that sense of kind of, I'm sorry. It's not felt with meaning, is it? Um, I um, was visiting my sister who has three young girls, uh, and I did something that they're not allowed to do. And my three-year-old niece reprimanded me, showed me the naughty step, and I had to sit there for three minutes. Fortunately, she's only sat there for three minutes because she's three. She had worked out I'm 53. Otherwise, I'd probably still be there. She set the timer on Alexa. You can tell how many times she's done this. She set the timer on Alexa. Alexa set the timer for three minutes. If the timer went off, she came back and she said to me, Auntie Dee, have you thought about what you did? And are you sorry? Now go and say sorry to Eliana. So off I went. And uh, I was made to apologise. Um, it's an example, isn't it? That actually, we've got to mean it. We've got to be sincere about what we do. Some of you will remember the story recorded in Mark and Luke of the widow giving her mite at the temple door. Wealthy people came and gave lots of money, but this widow, she didn't give very much. She gave a very small amount, but it was large because it was all she had. And God doesn't want you to give what you don't have. Don't look around at others and see what they do. 
Just listen to what God's saying to you and give willingly, give generously. I'm not sure that God requires us to give everything to him, although some people would do that. But he wants us to give what we can and give it willingly and know that that is multiplied over and over. We can't outgive God. So at this Christmas time, as we think about giving, the gifts of giving and receiving, maybe we don't give to those that have plenty and don't need it, not for the sake of it, but perhaps look to people who need something, whether that's your time, whether that's an opportunity you have. So let me remind you of that verse 6 and 7. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each person should give what they have decided in their heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And do you remember that verse at the very end, the last sentence in that reading that we shared, that reminds us at this time of what God gave to us. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, the gift that is his son, Jesus Christ, that came not just to make a beautiful season of Christmas, but came to sacrifice his life that we might have life in all its fullness, not just here on earth, but beyond. We thank God again for his gift. As we uh, come to the close of our time together, thank you for sharing in worship, and I pray that this Christmas season, this Advent, these next few weeks, as you prepare for Christmas Day, that God will speak to you, that you will know something of God's love to you, and that willingness and that desire for him to share that love with all around us. We sing a closing carol together, and uh, it's one of my favourites. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie, above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. We're going to stand, we're going to sing the four verses through, and I've asked that the band will join us singing on verse 3. And when we get to those words, make them your prayer this Christmas time. Please stand as we sing this through together. Um.
all. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. Just before we leave, I want to say a, a big thank you to Veg with Meat for sharing with us today and helping to make a special event with our red balls and brownies, a very special event. Um, we kind of have you here in our division and uh, we crashed just yesterday and I know that Veg is going to be off to Winchester in a few hours' time. But thanks for being here with us uh, this morning and uh, share that wonderful uh, theme with us, which I'm sure we're open to put into practice as we go from up this place. Thank you so much, and God bless each one of you. Um.